kind of uh, just open it up for questions, but I wanted to start, Jenny, we'll start, actually start with you. Uh, if you just kind of want to talk about making the tournament again and, and your, your opening thoughts. And you and Wes talk a little bit. Well, I feel like it's, you know, it's, it's always amazing to see your name up there. You know, obviously there's a lot of emotions that come in play and uh, what an interesting season. And, you know, it's a little bit different too. It's a unique year in terms of having our conference tournament the week before. And so we've kind of had to sit with a game that maybe we didn't want to sit with for a while. Um, but our practices have been really good. So that's been fun. And then now you have an opponent, you know, you're practicing against, yourself almost and trying to get better. So I'm excited to see us continue to do that, but also it's always a pretty awesome to be able to see that name come up there. And it's a pretty special time for the team. All right, guys, we'll go into questions. Whoever wants to start, feel free to jump on in. Yeah, Jenny, just wanted to start with sort of one of the things that you mentioned there, just the, the way that y'all have handled this last uh, week since the, mm -hmm. since the, tournament loss what stands out to you about the way that that your team has handled this especially the uh you know the, the leadership uh, among the players Skyler and, and and others and uh you know the way they've reacted I think the biggest thing this week is one there's a lot of gratitude in the fact that you know we have put a lot of of work into being able to make the tournament and to be part of the field. It's very competitive, as we all know. Um, so I think there's an element of trying to find that and understanding how far we have come, because again, a couple months ago, kind of looked a little different. Uh, and at the same time, I think that we've really gotten back in the gym to work on some fundamental things that we need to get better at. And that game gave us a lot of humility and we had to really look in the mirror against Iowa State and Iowa State played very well and we didn't. And so we needed to really step up and we needed to get better in the practice gym. And I think our leadership came very humble and very hungry. And that's what you want this time of year. And I know the most amazing part is when you're in March and your team comes with a really good mindset and practice, even when you don't know what your future is, um, that's that that's the best part from a coach's standpoint, because we love practice. We love getting better. We love focusing on different things, but when they come in that way, uh, you know, you got something special. And I, I know just as a follow-up to that, I know you weren't uh, necessarily a, a huge fan of the way the schedule fell, but with the way things happen, is it almost beneficial to have this time to sort of be able to flush that and, and work on some things you need to work on, but, but also, get that in your rearview mirror a little bit? Maybe, I, you know, and I don't know, I don't know if we're going to even know that answer, but I do, I do like the way that we're working through some things right now. So, uh, you know, and I've never had this, even in, when I was in the Missouri Valley conference, we, you know, we just finished this time and you're on the bus and you're learning how no way home, you know? And so it's a little bit different. And obviously even having it on selection Sunday and not Monday, you know, I mean, this is another year of, of that. So uh, I, I feel like I don't necessarily know the answer from game standpoint, but I do from a coaching standpoint, it was nice to get us back in the gym and working on fun. You know, you're, you can only really work on yourself. You can project all you want to project, but you really got to work on yourself. And there's not moments that you really get to do that throughout the season. Other than October, you go right into game prep and you try to sneak things in here and there. Um, but that week was really fun for us. And we haven't, I haven't had that not as a head coach. Yeah, I really appreciate it, Jenny. No, thank you, Ryan. Hey, Jenny. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, your opponent. This is a team that really likes to shoot the three-pointers. This is a team that's won a lot of games, 22 in a row. Uh, it's safe to assume this team has your, your team's attention? Oh, I think no question. Well, I think they have everybody's attention. I think they're a team that nobody wants to see in the tournament, you know, um, just every year. I mean, Florida Gulf Coast is, I mean, he's done an amazing job, has been there a long time. Uh, obviously, with my own background, I, I have a lot of familiarity with, you know, those, the powerhouse teams, and they're one of those perennial powerhouse teams. And so, uh, I feel like this is a game that we have to be ready and it creates a lot of different mismatches and 
um, you know, on both sides. And so you have to really be able to, it's going to be a fun game though, too. That's the, that's the good part. But you also know that at this time of year, it doesn't matter. It's March. You got to show up and you got to be able to play, especially in that tournament. Two years ago, uh, everyone was wondering how your team was going to react to being back in the tournament. Now you have a, a roster that has some players that have NCAA tournament experience. How much do you lean upon it, those players, especially for the, the young ones, uh, just to kind of guide them through this? Well, I think, again, I think it comes to the longevity of a season when you're coming to practice and you're still ready to come to practice to get better. And that's some of the feedback that we've had. You know, we always ask our players after practice in terms of what their feedback is. And it's been fun to be able to listen to them talk in the last week in terms of, okay, I feel like I'm understanding something different or I feel like we're getting better and we're working on some things. And so when you have that um, and you still have a smile on your face in March in practice, um, uh, that that's the stuff that you lean on. Right. And so we've had to lean on, you know, we have a freshman who it's a long season, you know, it's a long season for our freshmen. And then we have some experienced players that, yeah, of course it's long, but at the same time, uh, they understand that. So, um, you know, we're still getting sore when we're in the weight room. So I, you know, I had to convince them today that that's really good for you because it is, but sometimes we don't like all that either, but, um, no, I, I, I think you always rely on your team and it doesn't matter what your age is at this time of year. Everybody has a lot of experience. Um, you just got to be able to show up every day, whether it's practice or whether it's a game. Jeannie, hey, thanks so much. Have a good week. Okay. Hey, you too. Thanks, Eric. Hey coach, just the, the hype and the positive energy surrounding the women's tournament as a whole this year mm -hmm. has kind of reached seemingly new heights. Just how cool is that for you and for your players to see the world finally catching up a little bit to where this sport is at? Well, I think you're exactly right. I mean, you look at the sport of women's basketball and you look at even just the momentum that the final four created a year ago, you know, and we're in this really unique space here in Oklahoma where, you know, we're driving softball, we're driving women's gymnastics. So we have these female, you know, these female sports that are just dominant in what they're doing. And so it's been fun to be able to see that, but also watch women's basketball rise on a national level um, to all new heights. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible to be able to see the impact of what, you know, obviously Caitlin has done for the game from, you know, from a big 10 standpoint and from a national standpoint, but also you look at all the different teams, what South Carolina is continuing to do to elevate this game. You look at even UConn, what they've continued to do over such a long period of time. Um, and we're reaching coast to coast, we're reaching Midwest, it's everywhere. And so it's pretty special to be able to see uh, these amazing women step on the floor uh, compete at a really high level. And you're right. People are just really starting to fall in love with this game. Thanks coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Jenny, uh, I just got one question myself. So this is your third straight year of making the tournament since taking over Oklahoma, but the past two years, we've seen the team uh, exit in the second round. Now, a question I have is going into this year, this one being the third straight, is there kind of a different or adjusted mindset going into the tournament this time compared to the previous two? Well, I don't think the mindset was definitely to go in and go out as fast as we did, but I do think that, it, you know, you do have to, you have to learn. And I think the first year you kind of just get surprised at how good everybody is because it's the first year that they've been in the tournament. And then you go to that second year and you get a little bit better. But um, I think, again, that's what we're trying to really focus on is just continuing to get better. We know that we're going to play really, really good teams and you've got to be able to, you've got to be able to go, you know, and part of it is also, you've got to be able to go on someone else's home floor as well. So obviously the first game is, you know, quote unquote neutral. And then the second game, you, you know, you get past that first game, you're on someone else's home floor. So you have to be able to show up and you have to be able to play your best basketball at this time of year. So from a mindset standpoint, I don't know, our team is complete. I mean, not completely different, but a lot of our, you know, a lot of our players are different. And so we're just going in and we've got to continue to focus on getting better and being able to play. I love coaching this team. This is a really fun team and I want to coach them as long as I possibly can. Thank you very much. Hey, Jenny. Thank hey, you. Jenny. You were just talking about 
uh, having to go on the road. I was wondering about your seating. There was some talk of you guys being a four seed or a five seed. I know that um, even if you would have been a four seed, you guys wouldn't have been able to to host. Did you have any preference on where you guys were seated, considering that you weren't going to be able to host either way? Well, I think that a higher seed is always nice, obviously, or lower seed, um, you know, is always nice. Uh, and it is, it's one of those unfortunate things that the timing doesn't work out the way that you want it to from us, from that standpoint. Um, but I don't think you ever go through, or at least I don't go through and say, oh, I really hope we play this team or this team or this team. You, you have to be able to stay, you have to be able to focus on you being your best and, you know, playing who they choose for you. You don't get a say. It's not like you get to send out your resume and you start advocating for who you want to play against. So um, we knew a long time ago that we weren't going to be able to host. That doesn't mean that you don't want to play in a position to be able to get a top four seed. Going off of that, I guess, what are your your thoughts on Assembly Hall? I mean, they've averaged more than 10,000 fans this year. Just what are your thoughts on the environment there and what that'll be like? Well, it's been a long time since I've been there. It was when I played. So that's been a minute, um, but we don't need to calculate how long. Um, so no, I, I mean, obviously there's nostalgia there. It's, there's, it's a historical arena. They have great fan base. I love what Terry has been able to do in terms of building that fan base, because when I was there, it wasn't that. And so to be able to see what they've been able to do there is really impressive. Um, and, you know, we've been able to play at some places that have been pretty hostile, but um, you've just got to be able to go, but we, ha we have our first game first. So make no mistake. We're not, we're not even thinking about the second opponent. We're thinking about the first one and that's it. Jenny, I wanted to ask you, um, I know that you're kind of in your own bubble focused on your team, but, uh, obviously it was disappointing yesterday to see the men not get into the NCAA tournament. I'm wondering, you know, what kind of maybe words of encouragement have you offered Porter? I know you guys kind of came into this thing the mm -hmm. same time and how have you maybe seen his program grow despite you know not making the NCAA tournament being as close as they were this year you know we're we're devastated that they didn't get in and that's not uh you know his daughter's on our team and so you see it in an intimate way and Porter Moser is the best I I love working beside him you know one of the first people that reached out to me was him in, in getting seating as, as a parent, as, you know, as somebody you get to work with every day. Uh, I love what he does. I love what he's doing. I love who he is. I love working beside him. He's so easy to cheer on. That doesn't happen. Um, you don't have, you don't have men's and women's coaches that literally, you know, pour into each other and want each other to do well. And we work together so well. Um, he's just an incredible person. I've seen, you know, I love their team. I love their players. Those guys, I see them work. I see them, you know, and unfortunately, sometimes you get injured at the wrong time or one shot goes in or doesn't go in and it makes or breaks your season. And we've seen that a few times this year. Um, but I think the absolute world of him, you know, and I see him every day. So it's, you know, he shows up with a smile on his face, he's got great energy. And so for them to not have that name called up there, um, that's hard. That's really hard. And with as close as our programs are, it's sometimes it's really hard to see that, live that, and then still try to find your own joy in it because you want both of us to succeed at a really high level. And that's genuine. And again, I think that's what makes Oklahoma really special is that that's how we feel about each other. Because that's not everywhere. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. Hey, Jenny, could you dive into the matchup against uh, Florida Gulf Coast for a little bit, please? And uh, maybe somebody asked you that earlier. I, I'm right in the middle of my radio show trying to be on your Zoom, too. Um, could you just dive into the, what are you guys running into in this opening round? Right. So, they, James, they really spread you out. They're a team that goes you know five out they get up and down it's a fun style a lot of three-point shots 
lot of, you know, I mean, they basically play five guards. So that creates, you know, obviously some mismatches on some ends. Um, they, they, they win, you know, I mean, they win in the, in the NCAA tournament, they win their regular season. They went undefeated. They obviously won their conference tournament. Uh, they've got great tradition. Uh, they're just, they're just a very, very well-coached disciplined team uh, that has a very unique style that you have to adapt to. And so you have to game plan for this team. You have to understand what they're looking for. You have to know, uh, you have to stay very disciplined. And um, so it'll be, it'll be a great test for us. It'll be a great matchup for us. Uh, so I'm excited about it, but it will definitely be a great basketball game. It'll be great for our sport. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. Anything else, guys? Yeah, Jenny, just following up on that, uh, mm -hmm. talk about Florida Gulf Coast and everything that they do. Just how do you feel like your, your players and the, the style that y'all play sort of uh, goes with that and what, what kind of, uh, uh, I guess, challenges, but also, you know, there's a lot that uh, maybe lines up similarly with uh, the, the way y'all get up and down the floor. Well, I think from a pace tempo standpoint, it'll be a fun game. It'll be a fun game for fans. And, you know, you hope the 10,000 Indiana fans are going to be there for both games. So, um, and I think they will, because I think they're great women's basketball fans. And so that's, I think it's going to be a great environment. It's going to be a fun basketball game. Uh, so from that standpoint, the pace and tempo will be great. And for us, we have to do a great job of, of getting better and getting back to our pace and our tempo. I think we've had a couple games that we've really seen that. Um, but we haven't had a year of it. So that's what I'm excited about to be able to see us really share the basketball, uh, to be able to get our spacing a little bit better. Um, we're a little bit different in terms of style. Uh, you know, they're a lot more off the bounce. They're a lot more where they're going to drive and they're going to kick or they're going to drive all the way to the rim, uh, where ours is a little bit more off of a pass. So they're similar in one sense and they're just different enough in another. Uh, but we both share the ball and, you know, we're both very team oriented. So it will be a, it'll be a really fun game. I think for people. Hey, I really appreciate it, Jenny. Thank you. Anyone else? Awesome. Thank you, you guys. Everybody. Thank appreciate you. you. I appreciate you all. And thanks for covering us. So hopefully we get to keep talking, but appreciate you all. Boomer. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it, Josh, Jenny.